Hey YouTube. <clears throat> so uh you've been on Banggood or I'm sure eBay or any of those other places that sell these Chinese shit. Uh I bought one of these component testers. Of course it comes with the connectors not wired up and uh, this is the GM328A. I got it off of Banggood. And uh, when it arrived, of course, the screen's flopping around. It wasn't packaged all that well. And uh, I took a video before on another camera. And uh, I'm not sure how well that turned out, but I'll see if I can put it in this video somewhere. Hey, YouTube. So, uh, this just looks like the. Uh, you know, package from China, right? So, uh, anyway, I decided to get one of those component testers, transistor tester, whatever you want to call it. Uh, that's the way it comes packaged, right? If anybody that's bought anything from China knows what to expect, right? Hang on. There it is. Kind of interesting. Uh, hang on a second. Anyway, so yeah, well, uh, this is the way I got it. So the LCD screens outside of the backlight. It just sits in there, I guess. Nothing really holding it down. But here's the interesting part. That's the uh, test switch right there. So. Uh, doesn't look like anybody even tried to solder that in. So it is what it is. So, I guess we'll solder it up and connect the battery and give it a try, see what it does. Well, solder the switch in. And another problem. If I let go of the switch, it shuts off. And the LED doesn't light. Tells me my battery is good. So as I let go of the switch, there's no power latching. Well, I guess I'm gonna have to go through this and see what the heck it is. So I can find out what's holding up the works. <coughs> but uh when I first got this, uh, the battery on, turned it on, and it would only stay on as long as I held the button. It wouldn't power up properly. And uh, so I took a quick peek in the back here, just trying to figure out what was going on. And uh, there's a transistor right here. Let's see if we can get a close up. Q2 right there. Um, one of the legs wasn't soldered down. <laughs> It took me a minute to kind of figure out what was going on here. Uh, I was taking some quick measurements looking for voltages and stuff and <clears throat> every time I went from uh, I think base to emitter, I think it was base to emitter, uh, I can't remember now. Every time I, I, I measured across this transistor, the thing would power up. Um, and as long as I held one of my leads on the base, or sorry, the emitter, it stayed powered up. And I thought, well, what the hell's going on here? Um, well, of course, what was going on was my lead was actually making contact. So, and because I was going across the base and emitter, I was actually completing the circuit, and that's why it would fire up. And as long as I held my lead on the emitter there, it would continue to run. So, I had a good look at it and under magnification, and was able to see that that one leg wasn't soldered down properly. And so, anyway, now the thing works like a champ. So yeah, I think I got this off of Banggood for like, uh, I don't know, I can't remember, 20 bucks, something like that. Can't quite remember what it was. But anyway, um, this thing's actually, it's pretty cool. Um, 
you know, like you can transistor and stick it in the zip socket there. Powers up. It tells me is it's a BJT. It tells me which lead is which. Um, gets me a gain and it's pretty damn interesting, right? So the cool thing about this one is I can also do caps. So let me just pull something off the bench here. I don't know if it measures this high or not. This is a um, 4700 microfarad 50 volt cap. It's an old Elna. Um, I've had these for a while, but whatever. Let's see if we can get it to measure. You know what I might do? I might do it with a lead here. <laughs> Let's turn it on and see what it says. It says capacitor, that C comes up. And it tells me it's 4328 microfarad with an ESR of 1.9 ohms. You know, that's uh, and a leakage of what, 0.9% or something? That's pretty good. I mean, I'm pretty happy with that. that just a quick way to test caps and resistors. Diodes, uh, transistor. I mean, this thing does a lot of stuff. It's pretty damn cool, actually. You know, um, it's interesting because when I take my an LC77 here, so I mean, the LC77 will do a lot more uh, conclusive tests, right, than this thing will, but. Yeah, so anyway, I mean, so there's some setup, right? So I have to select aluminum electrolytics. And I have to tell the meter what it is. So let me say 4700 microfarad. And it's a, it's a 50 volt cap. So I can put in 50 volts. The light flashes to tell me that when I do the test that I've got to be careful because it's 50 volts. Uh, and then I got to put in a tolerance so I can say 10% um, to the plus and say 10% to the minus. And that gives it a range so then I hit the capacitor value. Okay, so what do we are? We're at like 4100 microfarad according to this, right? See, this one says 2.3% and it says it's bad. So I'm kind of inclined to believe my LC77 that this thing is bad um, as opposed to this little meter. But I'll, I'll test it again after I uh, take it off here. So let's do a leakage. I mean, it says the ESR is bad, but uh, that the leakage is good. Anyway, um, that back in the day cost me uh, a lot, <laughs> um, like, I don't know, a hundred times more than this thing. As far as I'm concerned, this little guy right here replaces a lot of stuff. You know, it replaces my LC77. It also replaces my TF46 Super Cricket. Because, um, well, this one will give me a, a lead identification. This one doesn't. Uh, it gives me good and bad and tells me leak or uh, gain. But I think this is a lot more versatile. And again, this cost me a hell of a lot more money than that. So, um, in the short term, what I will do is I'll be testing a lot of stuff, a lot of transistors and the like with this. And then comparing what I get to this, and we'll see. We'll see what, uh, see what I get. Now this is old, and I've 
you know, one could say that perhaps this is out of, cal out of calibration, rather. <clears throat> you know, it's probably got some old caps in it, and some resistors that have have uh, drifted a wee bit. So this may be out of calibration. It's been a long time since this has been calibrated, I would assume. Um, I've never had it calibrated, and uh, I don't even know the manufacturer date on this. But I'm sure it's not, uh, it, this has definitely got to be 20 some odd years old. Anyway, I think I've had it for 20 years, so it's, you know, it's probably approaching 30 years old. So, <clears throat> um, I'll be doing a lot of comparing between these two. And uh, if over time I feel it, that I can trust this, then it might just take this right off my bench, you know, um, we'll see. So I would say, you know, if you've got, what is it, like 12 bucks or 20 bucks or whatever this thing was worth, which is like cheap, it's cheap. If you've got uh, 20 bucks or so, get yourself one of these GM 328A component testers and give it a whirl. It's, I mean, it's a handy little device, it really is. Um, of course, I'm going to try and get a little uh, project case, build it in there, build a little DC power supply so they can plug it in and have it on the bench. And I'll probably extend these a bit. I'm probably not use these. I'll relocate the, the button. I'm going to take the, the zip off uh, just to get out of the way. Relocate the button. So uh, I think I'm actually going to use this a bit. I think this is going to be a pretty handy little tool. And, you know, it's small enough, portable enough that I could probably take it with me, you know. I'd suggest, you know, head over to Banggood or whoever sells these. That's where I got mine for Banggood. Um, head over to Banggood and uh, give, one of these try, give one of these a try. It's, uh, it's a great little tester. I'm not affiliated with Banggood in any way. I paid for this thing. They don't pay me to do nothing or say nothing. But that's my review of the GM328A. Thanks for watching.